Newton's Laws of Motion, Stemscopedia Reading. Reflect. Have you ever heard the story about Isaac Newton and the apple? Newton was a scientist who lived about 300 years ago. He made many important discoveries about how and why things move. Newton was walking through an apple orchard one day and thought about how things fall. He wondered why apples fall straight down and why they speed up as they fall. After some time, this led to his discovery of the scientific laws that explain the force of gravity. Gravity is just one of many forces we experience every day. Newton went on to explain important principles about how forces change motion. These principles are called Newton's Laws of Motion. Gravity is a force that changes motion. What keeps you sitting in a chair? Why do you not float away into space? The answer is the force of gravity. Gravity is a force that pulls every object toward the center of the Earth. You can feel the Earth's gravity pull you back down to the ground. This pull is called your weight. Gravity is all, always a pull and never a push. Forces change motion. Look out. There's a gravitational attraction between all objects. Gravity is a force of attraction between two or more objects that pulls one object toward another. An object must be very massive to pull hard enough on objects to cause a change. The force of gravity increases with the mass of the objects and decreases with the distance. What are other forces that cause an object's motion? Certain forces only push or only pull. Other forces can do both. For example, the force of gravity is always a pull and never a push. Here are some other examples of everyday forces. Magnetic force. This is a force between two magnets or between a magnet and certain metals, such as iron, that can push or pull. Electrostatic force. This force has to do with the charge an object carries. This is like static electricity. Opposite charges attract or pull, and the same charges repel or push. Mechanical force. This is a push or pull that one thing exerts on a system's state of rest or uniform motion. Machines, like cars, can supply mechanical forces. Animals and people can also supply mechanical forces. Mechanical forces can help you move. Reflect. Friction. Friction is a force that slows things down. Have you ever noticed that things that are rolling or sliding or otherwise in motion eventually slow down and stop? If no other forces are involved, moving objects on Earth slow down because of friction. The cause of friction is rubbing together of two surfaces. The rougher the surfaces, the greater the force of friction. Spring force. Some things change shape when force is applied to them. A lump of modeling clay and a balloon both change shape when you squeeze them. However, the modeling clay keeps the new shape it was squeezed into. The balloon returns to its original shape when the force is removed. The force that returns the balloon to its original shape is called a spring force. Other things can exert spring forces are rubber bands and springs. What do you think? Which forces require contact and which forces act at a distance? Gravitational, magnetic, and electrostatic forces can act at a distance without contact. For example, the gravitational attraction between the Sun and the solar system objects act at a distance. However, mechanical, frictional, and spring forces require contact with the object or push or pull it. Let's reflect. How can forces change an object's movement, shape, or position? Isaac Newton discovered more than just the laws of gravity. He also explained how force is related to motion or the movement of objects. Newton's, Newton explained force and motion in three simple laws. The first two laws describe forces that act upon individual objects, while the third law is about pairs of objects that collide. Let's reflect. Newton's first law. Things do not change their motion unless, an, unless a force acts on them. 
This means that things that are not moving will stay put and things that are in motion keep moving at the same speed in a straight line. An object's motion does not change unless an unbalanced force acts on the object. Objects that are not moving will stay put and objects that are moving will keep moving at the same speed in a straight line unless acted upon by another force. Look right here. Balanced forces cause no motion. Unbalanced forces cause motion. This is most important. We can predict what will happen to objects on Earth that are affected by gravity. When we throw a ball in the air, gravity makes the ball fall back to the ground instead of letting it remain in motion forever. Gravity makes small objects in space orbit larger objects, like planets orbit the sun. We can predict that landslides, rivers flowing downhill, and precipitation will fall toward the center of Earth due to gravity. Newton's second law. If a force continues to act on an object, it will move faster and faster. This increasing speed is called acceleration. The greater the force, the greater the acceleration. However, the force applied is the same when you compare two different size masses. The object with more mass has less acceleration. A force can also cause a moving object to slow down. This is called negative acceleration. Does this sound familiar? Friction causes moving objects to have negative acceleration. In other words, it is common sense that if you have to use greater force to speed or slow down an elephant than to change the motion of a mouse. Newton's third law. The third law deals with the pairs of objects. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This means that forces always occur in pairs. When a force acts on an object, the object pushes back in the opposite direction with the same amount of force. Think of a book sitting on a table. The force of the Earth's gravity is pulling the book down. If the table did not exert an opposite and equal force upward on the book, the book would go through the table. What do you think? What affects how stored energy is transferred to energy of motion? Picture a batter getting ready to hit a ball. He swings his bat backwards and waits for the right pitch. The stored energy in his arm and the poised bat is called potential energy. When he releases the bat to connect with the ball, that energy of motion is called kinetic energy. There are several factors that affect how potential energy is converted or changed to kinetic energy. You already know about Newton's first law of motion, where an object at rest or in motion will stay at rest or in motion unless acted upon by a force. The baseball and bat are not going anywhere unless the batter pulls the bat back and gets into position to swing. The more energy that is stored in the batting swing the batting swing position, the more energy that is transferred to kinetic energy. When the batter applies the force of the swinging bat to send the ball out of the park for a home run. Applying Newton's second law, you know that more force equals more acceleration. This is why successful professional batters have developed the strength and the coordination to hit the ball very hard. Force times mass equals acceleration. So the harder the bat hits the ball, the more it will accelerate. Lastly, lastly using Newton's third law, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. As much as the bat strikes the ball, the ball pushes back on the bat. Because the bat has more mass than the ball, the ball will be accelerated by the bat and hopefully will go very far.